and welcome to section 3.1, Building a Function, brought to you by Edgeonix. As we discussed in previous section, logical statements and operators are the building blocks of functions. A function is a group of related statements designed to accomplish a specific task. Typically, we think of these as performing op operations on data, whether it's cleaning or applying some type of mathematical formula. Functions are a great way of making sure that we accomplish that task and have reproducibility with it. Another key aspect is creating them to streamline tasks we might complete on a regular basis. The keyword def, which will stand for kind of our definition, that's used to bin defining a function. A return statement is how we end it. We can think of it as an alternative method for getting values as outputs, as opposed to relying solely on things like print while we're at the end of something. So when we think about building a function, we want to think about something we're going to need to do more than once, and we want to be able to apply over and over whenever we may need it. Some functions are very versatile. Some are designed to work with specific sets of data. We'll see a little bit of each as we go on here. Now, let's get coding. I'm going to go ahead and open up a notebook in Jupyter in Typelet section 3. I suggest you do the same, and we can get started together. Okay, so as we get started here, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of note taking here. So let's say section 3.1. And the first definition here we're going to create is something I'm going to call hello there. So we say def, D-E-F, and we see that nice dark green text there for our keyword. And I'm going to call mine hello there. And then I'm going to say name with a colon at the end. So what this does is the DEF creates my definition. And then this blue text, hello underscore there. Um, something to think about whenever you name a definition, I do suggest using the all lowercase. You can put uppercase if you'd like to. Um, but the no spaces, only with underscores method. That's kind of the preferred way in Python. And then I'm going to say the input. What I'm putting into my function is just going to be a name. So what this function is going to do is it's going to be a nice way of greeting someone and we're going to print something out. So the input is name, and then what's going to happen when I apply this function to a name, I'm going to say, hello there, comma. And then let's go ahead and put in the middle here. So notice I'm outside of that quote mark there, plus name, whatever it may be. Oh, my bad, I accidentally hit run there. And then at the end here, we're going to go ahead and put, nice to meet you. So we can go ahead and run that. The reason why it gave me the error is because I didn't have this part and I had a plus symbol at the end there. So let's see how this works. So if I go ahead and call on hello there, and then my input, let's say the string, I'm going to say Ashley. When I run it, we can see our output there. Hello there, Ashley. Nice to meet you. Now, something you might notice is that it kind of looks weird. It's like I'm missing something here. So let's go ahead and clean it up a bit. I'm going to put some spaces in here. So maybe after my comma, I want to put a space, and maybe before my period there, I want to put a space. Let's go ahead and capitalize that N, right? So now you'll notice when I run this again, nothing particularly happens. Also, that space is in the wrong spot. Let's put it after the period. There we go. Nothing happens here, because again, Jupyter runs up to down, so vertically from the top to bottom. So I have to actually run this cell again. And we can see when I run that, I get a nicer print statement there. So it looks like how we'd like it to be written. Let's go ahead and create another definition here. Maybe we want to work with some numbers. So let's say def, and we'll call this squared value. And this time, I'm going to say my input is a number. So in that number, I'm going to say x equals number and then squared. And then I'm just going to go ahead and say return x. So the difference here, in this definition, we used a print statement to print something out. Return is just a way as if you don't want to print something all kind of fancy, you could just use return as well. So if I say squared value and then put a 5 in there, we can see that value 5 comes out. Or maybe I want to do squared value with a negative 5 just to test it. Cool. And then let's see what else happens if I do squared value. Maybe I don't do negative 0 0.5. Fantastic. It's working for everything. So here's two different basic functions that we just developed. So the key idea here is the input. We had single inputs into here. Notice whatever I call this, it doesn't actually matter. It's just defining a variable here. So the whole output side to it, 
is literally just what's occurring in here. So again, name is just the variable that's being inputted. Here, number is the variable that's being inputted. So that was our introduction to functions. In the next part, we'll get a little more advanced. Looking forward to continuing our learning in the next lesson.